Welcome back everybody. <clears throat> if you're new here, I'm Kathy Arbor and today is Watercolor Tuesday. So if you uh, want to join chat and uh, get some questions asked or just chat with the others that are in chat, feel free. It's for everybody. So today I thought I would do some <clears throat> You could take this as a winter scene or summer even, foggy, snowy, whatever you want. But I thought it would be uh, cool to show you how easy it is to do this in a wet into wet method and then going over top with some dry, uh, wet into dry. So we're going to be just using... Um, Probably one or two colors, uh, dioxazine purple and probably Payne's gray or an indigo to get the really dark darks. And I'm going to be doing this on a piece of watercolor paper this time because I, it's a little easier doing wet into wet on watercolor. So I'm going to be using today is some Fabriano watercolor and it's 140 pound and 25% cotton. So this is a, I like this type of, um, oh thanks, this type of uh, watercolor when you're practicing. It's not expensive, you can get it um, fairly cheap nowadays. Hey Lisa, good to see you. Well, I got some mail came in. So we open it. Oh, it's my sewing stuff. Carol, I got my stuff. <laughs> I want to do Carol. Um, what does she go by now? She changed her name. Um... Is it Mystical Cauldron? It was, but she changed it. Hey Juanita, good to see you. <clears throat> now I did get my pens, and this, I haven't, I don't know where mine went, so I got another one. And I heard that the 28 millimeter is a lot easier for doing smaller work, curves, that type of thing, so I bought some of those. So I want to get into the slow stitching in some of my papers. And this is the uh, Speedball and it is for sketching and it's got six nibs, two handles, and I believe it's doesn't it doesn't say on here but in the description on Amazon it did say that they were <clears throat> the uh, cartooning type of nib because I have white um, ink and you know how we're it's like <laughs> a battle with the white pens we're always trying to find the perfect white pen <laughs> So I thought, well, why don't I, why don't I just use a nib in my white ink or um, gouache? It'll do the same thing. And there's actually a really good white ink out. It's been out for a while. It's a cartoon correction white ink. And I saw this by, um, oh, what's that? Um, watercolor, the mind of watercolor, I think this channel is. Hey, Ange, good to see you. He did a, a comparison on white inks, and he loved this. And he has seen it, but had never bought it. And now he says that will be his favorite one. Hey, Janet, and it's it's a cartoon white ink for corrections and illustration. And 
<clears throat> it doesn't smudge and when it's dry it doesn't re-wet. It's permanent. So I thought, okay, I gotta get some of that. So that's on its way <laughs> too, I think. And I've got the Doc Martens regular white one, I believe. So I've used my dip pen with Chinese white ink. It works, but just not as convenient. Wash your nibs really well. Okay, Janet, I will. I haven't used nib pens. Now this is going to really date me. <laughs> Since I was in grade school when I can't remember what grade it was and we finally got to use a pen. And we didn't have we didn't use um like a big pen. We actually used fountain pens. I can't even remember what grade that was and it was awesome. <laughs> it's probably really dating me. <laughs> there was, I think, other pens out there, but we just didn't use them. Uh, how are you, Ange? It's good to see you. Are you on your lunch break or are you at home? So this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> Now, I haven't done this ahead of time, so <laughs> this is going to be real life. It could be a fail, but you're going to learn with me. So, as I said, I got some watercolor paper this time. And um, if you have, let's see, <clears throat> I'm just thinking out loud here. If I have a piece of plastic. Should fit. Let's see. Maybe not. I've got, I want a piece of plastic. I might not be able to use it. I could put it on a... Uh, oh, we'll try it this way. Maybe on a board. That gonna be just eh, it's not gonna work. Let's see if I got another board. Um I think I'd have a plastic lid big enough. Maybe this one will fit. So the idea is to keep your paper wet. It's gonna, no, that's not going to work either. It's just a little, little bit off. Just hold on. I'm determined. some plastic here. So what I want to do <clears throat> I'm going to put it on this plastic. There like that. Yes it will. Awesome. Well, then I can't tape it, though. I'm going to tape the sides. I'm not, well, I guess I better do it the long way. So, so I don't run any trouble. 
<clears throat> I'm home on short term disability for surgery. Oh, jeez. COVID test. Oh no. Well, hopefully it's not <clears throat> too bad for you. Take some vitamin D. It really helps. Most of us are deficient. And I'm going to put... piece of tape along the sides I hate it when the tape is either not sticky enough or too sticky. <laughs> so just get a piece of watercolor paper. You don't want to go <clears throat> any lower than 140 pounds because you're going to put a lot of water on this. Um, another one. Hope for the best. Let's see if this one will work. Your washi tape I think only lasts for so long and then it becomes horribly bad as far as releasing off the roll. go. I think it should work now. So what I want to do is to make a good puddle of I think we'll start off with um, indigo, I guess. I'm going to make a puddle of it. Quite a bit. And then I want to put some dioxazine purple. And I'm going to put it over here so I don't mix it up. So fairly thick. Get a paper towel ready. Now, I'm going to wet the area. I think I'm going to 
probably I'm gonna get a big brush that'll hold a lot of water Let's see. big 20 <laughs> he's big and I'm gonna wet the whole page with nice clean water I love this type of painting. I think it's so magical looking and I love watching the <clears throat> paint flow on it. So get a really good coat on and let it soak into that paper. Because you want this to stay wet for fairly long because we're going to add a bunch of paint here and there so we don't want it to have a hard edge. So just take a look. Make sure there's nothing pooling. You don't want puddles but you want a nice shine to your paper. Then I'm going to take a little bit of this blue and purple and get a bunch of water and start adding it. I'm going to have um, lots of dark color down here. And then I'm just going to tip it and let it run. So I'm just letting it run down. Let it move. While it's still wet, you can still go in. darker down here. Still wet, still got a shine so you can still play with it. More of this up here. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush. Let's see. I want. Let's see what brushes I got here. This is a number four. And now I'm going to take some more of that. More on the bluey side, I think. And with a smaller brush, I want to start just in um, more or less the darker areas up here. I'm just going to start making trees. But I want them... to be um, blurred out, so you just kind of have to play with it, see what you get, make some sticks. This is in a forest, so a lot of times you see the pines, they only have the top part of their tree part with branches 
because a lot of times you'll have mm, too much shade so the bottom branches kind of die off. I can put some more in here. I'm still got a wet palette and paper. Just playing. They don't have to be um, even or anything. A lot of times you'll see these trees uh, very lopsided. Just put some in. So we're going to be <clears throat> making them kind of... Um, Layered, I guess you could say. So these will eventually blur out. some down here. You'll have some crossing each other, maybe some sticks, like bare ones that are dead, but they're kind of hanging off of another one. So you do that. And while it's still wet, you can also take your big brush again and wet the bottom area a little bit. And that will kind of fog them out too. So you're, you kind of get to, um, If you want, add some. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry or dry it with the dryer. If you let it dry on its own um, is best, but because we're here on YouTube, I'm not going to make you sit here for 20 minutes. <laughs> They kind of blurred. That's what you want. That gives you the background look. Hey, Lori. 
Good to see you. You did a fantastic job. You and your sister did a great job on those paintings. I was very impressed. It doesn't take long for it to dry. Oh, okay. That's a little damp. Let's dry it just a bit more. I'm going to put quite a bit more water on it. Now I want to add a little bit more. We get darker each time we start to put more on. So I'm going to use this big brush again and get some more of this. And this time I'm going to go in just certain areas. And this is wet into dry, but I'm going to go around the edges and just soften them up. So you can still take your brush. Let's try this. And you can even do that too. I want it kind of misty looking. So let's see, a little bit more there. I don't think I need that right now. Where's my other one? a little bit here and there. It's kind of cloudy looking up here. It's part of the sky. Night sky. We don't want hard edges. We want soft edges in the sky. And then down here we want it fairly dark. More on the purpley side. So let's get some more purple here. And I want it fairly wet again down here. More on the bottom. Just 
kind of mixing the colors a little bit. That blue. But I don't want hard edges. And I can take my cloth, take out some I want. In here. Is that, uh, looks like that's really bright. Is it flashed out for you guys? Is that better? I guess it looks splashed out because of the, the water glare on it. Okay, so we can actually put some more trees in so that those dark colors, we can put more in there. So there would be, let's try. I'm going to put some stems in this time, and is it still wet enough? I'm just going to put a bunch of lines down, and these will be the areas that I want trees. Then I'm gonna I have a fan brush here. I thought I would try. I just want a bit. It's kind of hard to get that look I want. I think. Let's see. I'm not used to a fan brush. Said we're playing here. This is all experiment.
right now. clean water and you just brush the bottom so it kind of disappears again playing with this, just see how I can use this brush for making trees. I haven't really played with the fan brush in watercolor before. As you know, it's a little different than our acrylic. Bigger one up here, I think. If I just dab. Kind of looks cool. That's fairly wet. I suppose you could do pen work too. When it's wet, it kind of separates kind of looks like um, very fine detail on your um, branches it's kind of cool it's 
Just make sure you leave lots of um, space in between the branches too, because they're not all full trees. A lot of times you can see through And the areas that are wet gives you more of a misty, foggy look. And then when you hit a drier section, they're more um, sharp looking. It's actually fun to do. Just give it a try. You don't have to do a whole line of trees like I'm doing. You could just do maybe three in a area just to get the feel of it, but they're actually quite fun to do. I'm just dabbing. This is a number four brush. So the more you, you um, come up to the foreground, the darker your color is going to be. And overlap your trees. Uh, no, the, well, there's bits and pieces of it that's dry, um, Lori. That's the unique way of doing this, is when mist goes through your trees, you'll see bits of your trees really sharply, and then there'll be other bits that'll be kind of fogged out. So when you have some areas that are dry and some aren't, that gives you that foggy look. just dabbing and the you'll get different um, varying degrees of the fog by how wet it is too This is a really cool one to practice on because you're only using a couple colors. You could just use one actually if you wanted to and just practice doing your strokes with that and the water um, content. So lots of overlapping. It's fun to do. Just try it. I think you'll you'll enjoy it and be surprised. 
don't judge it right off the bat. Um, a lot of times when you're concentrating really hard on a specific object, um, you tend to focus more on the line work than the actual object. And then when you, sometimes it looks distorted to you because you've been concentrating too much on that line work. It doesn't look like, um, what do you think? I guess you're you're viewing it with too much detail after a while. So you have to sit back and go have a coffee, come back with better eyes, and then you'll see the whole picture instead of bits. If you know if you understand what I'm <laughs> getting at. You t uh, I guess it, you get too focused in um, close up, not the whole picture. And then it can get your view of it gets distorted it as a whole when you go to look at it. So that's why you have to step away. Okay, now I think it's, I want this to stay fairly cloudy. Right in here. Put some more color. Let's put a few more in there and then we'll do a bit of. Well, actually, I should have some water in here, anyways. This one will be a little bit closer. So it'll be bigger. Indigo. So my my um, indigo color is more thicker. Because I want it to be darker because it's up front now. And there's different types of pine trees and evergreens and like they're not all with the the um, branches falling. Some actually turn upward. So just play with it.
Now I'll probably play with this um, technique quite a few more times because each time you do it you learn something. So don't get it discouraged if it doesn't turn out the way you want it right off the bat. Maybe this one will have branches going upwards. I like to have the center kind of more condensed though. You can still see some daylight through it, but don't make most of it um, see through. You don't want it looking like a um, stylized tree you want more realistic looking unless you're going for stylized which you could I'm still going over top of the uh, wet areas, so it's blurring parts and pieces of it out. Uh, let's put some more in here. I'm going to fix this uh, guy up a little bit. Just the one I did with the uh, fan brush. I, I'm going to have to work on it. Do some individual trees with the fan brush. I know there's a way of doing it, I just I'll have to play with it a little bit, I think. So I didn't like the way this looked. I think this needs to be a little darker in here.
I think I need to try that again. Joey, here's Carol. I was talking about you. Were your ears burning? I got my cutter today. <laughs> so now I can cut my pieces of fabric so I can start doing my slow stitching. Found all my thread and everything. So, no excuses now. Oh, did you get, um, dumped on, Carol? We didn't get any, not a, not a stitch of snow, which is unusual because usually you guys don't get anything. <laughs> I started painting some fabric. Oh, awesome. Are you going to show it on uh, Saturday? Um, if anyone's interested. Um, the Magical Touch Studio, she does uh, slow stitching, mixed media, and she's doing a um, stitch along of a jelly, er, of a stitch roll every Saturday at 9, I believe. Oh, no thanks. I don't want any... <laughs> No, it's kind of nice not to have a huge amount of snow here this year. <laughs> usually, usually we're three, four feet in the yard by now. No, it's nice. You can have it. <laughs> All right. So see how it's kind of foggy looking? And that's just from putting water on it when it's just starting to dry. And then it pushes that pigment. Now, what else can we do here? I, uh, we could actually take some more out by taking one of our brushes. And a little stiffer brush probably would be best. Let's try this cat tongue here. And just wet it. With clean water. If you want to, preferably a clean towel. Now this is dioxazine purple, so it might not come up. It's a fairly tough. Oh, it came up a little bit. But if you want it a little bit lighter in areas, you can do that too. Let's see if we can get some of this up. Yeah, a little bit. I 
don't like this hard line here. So let's try and get rid of that. You can lift a bit of it. Dioxin pur purple is very, very staining. So, um, let's see. What else can we do here? There it is. Uh, I think I need some more faint trees back here. So I'm going to take some of this light purple and just do a few light colored ones back here. Remember your your um, paint will dry lighter. So sometimes you think, oh that's too bright. But just wait till it dries. A lot of times it won't look that as bad as you think it's gonna be. And the more you do the more familiar you'll get with colors and how dark they dry and separate and and each brand is different. A lot of times you'll see the um, staining capabilities on the packaging. Some, not all brands do that, but some do. Just gonna fog that out a little bit. Maybe one right here. A lot of times the trees don't look very full, um, especially in the woods area that where they're they're older and kind of got if you if you've got a lot of snow and stuff they get weighed down so they don't um, look as full and plump. Just fog it out. Maybe a few in here. Try different brush marks to see what it looks like. Maybe you'll find your way of doing trees. So because it's lighter in color, it, lo it looks more in the distance. So you can still put them in if, if you uh, think you need some more in the distance.
Or they could be fogged up more and that's why they look lighter. Or misted out. However you want to look at it. A few of these. A little more back here. You could put trees in, regular trees too, if you wanted to. And then I think I'll come in with a little bit darker in some of the areas also. Do some of this, make it a little bit the center part here. Let's see, I'm just playing here, seeing what I can do. It works great, if it doesn't, I learned something. I like to experiment, see what's possible. I think that's too blue. out I guess. That one's not doing what I wanted it to do. Alright. This one I think needs some more dark in here. This one would be darker. Some more of that dark color. This one is going to be coming all the way down. A bit more of that.
Sorry, I'm not talking too much. Concentrating here. That's the trouble with doing experiments. Your, your concentration is solely on the work you're doing. So it's very difficult to keep a conversation going. But hopefully you guys are talking to each other. I'm just using the tip of my brush, more or less, to do these trees. Kind of skipping around. I'm keeping it kind of on an angle. And fairly thick paint for the foreground here. This one could have a bunch of sticks, old branches coming out. Same with this one. This one a little bit darker. This could be the top of a smaller one, maybe. And a little more paint. And I'm going to make this guy a little thicker. I think I want this one be uh, more noticeable, more detailed, I guess. trying to use the tip of my brush to give it a little bit more of a shaggy look. And I'm overlapping a lot of these. Maybe this one, just show bits of it. Maybe it's half in the mist. Just the top part. a little bit more on the bluey side. Just going to do a bit of dabbing. A little bit 
bit more on here. Maybe we just see the edge of one. If that will work. And then, um, where do I put? Dark in there. I think it needs to be darker. Right in here. So I'm going to take my big brush again and just wet the bottom area here. Let it run. And maybe a bit in there. Okay, let's try it and see what we get.
I want it good and dry. Thanks, Carol. You love the peaking tree. Is <laughs> this one? <laughs> All right, let's do a little bit more detail. Leave it a little bit more. I think just looking at it in the monitor, seeing what else I can do with it. I think this needs
Okay, now I think I need more in here because it's two little soldiers in a line type of thing <laughs> and it doesn't look realistic because trees are normally bunched, not in the wild. So we'll need a few more in here, I think. Now I can do just distant, or not distant, but more on the foggy side. So let's wet this area right in here. So it's not so um, clear. It's more in the fog. So put one back in here. A bit more foggy looking. darker when they go down here because it would be darker. See how that goes. Should work. Okay, let's try that up again. there.
there? Is it there? <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling it dar. It's dare, isn't it? Should I put some birds in there? Let me think. Or should I put snow? I could put snow. Dare. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry if I was calling you the wrong name. <laughs> I'm not good with names. What do you think I should do? Snow? Because the snow could look cool. I could do it on a wet background so it's kind of blurred. With some um, gouache. I might look kind of cool, actually. Let's see what I got here. Um, <laughs> whatever. As long as they call you for supper, right? <laughs> That's what I used to say. Okay, let's do some snow. Why not? We're learning here. <laughs> so, I'm going to wet, make sure the whole area's got a wet sheen on it. Because what will happen is It will mix There's my toothbrush. So I have I'm gonna dip my toothbrush into the wet water. Get a fair amount on there and smushing it in. And what will happen is it'll blur. Now you can get bigger marks if you want bigger marks. So we'll, I'll show you. See how it's blurring? It's not real defined. It's, it's, it spreads out a little bit. And that gives it a kind of a distant look to it too. So, we can dry that again. <laughs> Carol probably doesn't want any more snow. So I'm just going to set this by drying it. And then I'm going to make some a larger um, flakes for up front. So you gotta make sure that this is wet because if you keep it wet, wet, wet all the time, it's not gonna, paper is gonna degrade, start to kill. So let's 
let's see. I want a brush that's got a little bit of might try this mm, maybe a bristle brush yeah that might work we'll see we'll see <laughs> I'm gonna just well maybe not I want it to be work. Yeah, a little bit. These are a little more defined. So they'll be up front. So they'll be, you'll be seeing them as more defined flakes instead of the ones that are in the background are less defined. Okay, so we'll dry those. That's it. Let's take the tape off. Oh, I got a little bit of seepage. Oh, well. bound to happen. It's a lot of water. But I can just go in with um, Posca or some gouache and clean up the edges. Uh, 
that away now? Just uh, fix up this edge. And this edge. I think that's it. There. And then we can sign it. I'm going to sign it with this. There she be. I think it turned out pretty good. This is something I will do probably more and more. I love this style. It does take a little bit of practice, I think, to learn how to play with the water ratio with the paint. But yeah, it's fun. I like it. Thanks guys. I'd say this was, oh, thanks Janet. You should try it. I'd love to see what you can do with it too. Thanks Jilly. <laughs> you want it Carol? <laughs> In memory of your snowstorm. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. So I hope you'll try it and you can do it on a really really small piece you don't have to do it on a big sheet like this just do like three trees at a time or something the mist around the bottom of it and then you can get larger and larger as you go but it's fun so I will let you guys go. Oh, wait a minute. I do this weekend for budding artists. Your lesson will be up. And this is what we're going to be painting. <laughs> it's the battle of the birdhouse. And because it's winter, the birds leave, but the, the little sprites and elves, they, they uh, take over. <laughs> but you got to be quick, because they don't last long. Before you know it, it's full and you're freezing. So this will be up on probably Saturday, um, and I'll have a printable for this, um, for the traceable. And... Um, step-by-step -step paint along and then uh, the week after blooming artists will have their um, live stream I will do a live stream I'm not sure how many will be there it's always uh, iffy because usually I do it on a Friday or a Saturday and most people are busy so I'm not sure if I'm going to continue doing the live streams on the top level or not. But we'll see. We'll see how many come. So I'll let you guys go. And we'll see you on Thursday for a paint along. And uh, I will post 
um, what I'm doing ahead of time so you guys can see what we're going to do. Are you going to paint in it on your channel? What, the elves? Uh, the little, these guys? Um, it's on Patreon and it's on the membership. Both Patreon and membership are the same. It's just that I have the two because some people are unable to view it on um, YouTube because of their Apple product. So I have to have a Patreon also. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's on the uh, budding artist level two. All right. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Stay safe and stay creative. Bye for now.